Hi, my name is Matt, and I'll be going over our team solution to the Asherah Great Energy Predictor 3 Kaggle competition. So first, some background information about our team. I'm a senior data scientist at the growth marketing startup Iterable, and I'm based out of Hawaii. My teammate Isamu is a researcher at Canon, and he's based out of Yokohama, Japan. So now a quick summary of the competition objective. At a high level, the task is to predict building energy usage. Our input data was building energy usage during 2016, but we also had metadata about the building and weather data. So given the input data, we needed to predict energy usage during 2017 and 2018. This figure shows a high-level overview of our solution. We started by pre-processing and cleaning our data. Next, we created features and trained our models. We used CatBoost, LightGBM, and multi-layer perceptrons. We trained our models on different groupings of the data and then we got our final model by ensembling our predictions using the generalized weighted mean. Our final solution got us first place on the private leaderboard. Now I'll go over our pre-processing methods. This was one of our most important steps and so I'll spend some time detailing our approach. First, we detected and filtered out three different types of anomalies, long streaks of zeros, large spikes, and then other anomalies that don't fit into either one of the first two cases. This figure shows what we mean by long streaks of constant values. Here, this is clearly due to some sort of outage and doesn't fit into the normal usage pattern and so should it it should be removed. This figure shows a building with large negative and positive spikes. The green curve is the raw training data. The dark blue curve shows predictions when we train a model on the raw data. And the cyan curve shows predictions when we train a model on the clean data with the anomalies filtered out. Um, if we don't remove the anomalies, then our predictions become volatile. We can see that in July, the variance of our predictions start to get, start to increase. And we, are, we can also see that the bias is negatively affected by anomalies. Here, the dark blue curve is a bit lower than we'd expect it to be. Another type of pre-processing that we used was time zone correction. We and some of the other competitors noticed that the time zone of the meter readings were probably not the same as the time zone of the weather data. And so to fix this, some of the other competitors did some detective work and determined the location of the different sites. From location, we were able to determine time zone and then shift the timestamps. This made the data better aligned and improved our model's predictions. There was also a lot of missing values in the weather data. We found that using simple linear interpolation to fill in the missing values helped our models. The final type of pre-processing that we applied was target transformations. And the obvious transformation to try is the log 1p of meter reading. But we also tried some not so obvious transformations. For example, we standardized meter reading by dividing by square feet. And so instead of predicting energy usage, we we're predicting energy usage per square foot. And training models with these transform targets helped us add diversity to our ensembles. An important component of this competition was leak data, and unfortunately, some of the ground truth labels were available online. But luckily, 
the leaks were made public by other calculators and they were excluded from the final private test set. We ended up using the leak data as a holdout set for local validation. We tried a lot of different features in this competition and here are the ones that helped. I won't go over them all, but I will discuss the most important ones. We used a Savitsky Goalie filter to smooth and differentiate temperature. We also created categorical interactions. These are features created by concatenating other features together. And lastly, we used Bayesian target encoding to map some of the categorical interactions into numerical variables. We mentioned that it was important for us to train many diverse models. This diagram shows how we built them. First, we started by splitting the data. For example, we could split our data by meter and train four models, one for each meter. Or we could split by site or split by building ID and meter pair or not split at all and train on the entire data set. Next, we chose the algorithm, which could be one of like GBM, CatBoost, or a multi-layer perceptron. And we did this because some models are better than others for a given data type. For example, CatBoost is known to work well with categorical data. Next, we validated our models using time series cross-validation. The size of the validation set can be viewed as a hyperparameter and varying this hyperparameter helps us to build more diverse models. Finally, we combined the strengths of each model in an ensemble. So as mentioned before, ensembling was a key component of our solution. Our best single model would have only placed us in the high 200s on the private leaderboard. This model consisted of LightGBM using the important features discussed earlier. Um, the data was split by meter and validated using 12-fold time series cross-validation. So that's our solution. Isamu and I would like to thank the competition organizers and Kaggle for hosting this competition. We really enjoyed competing and we learned a lot during this competition. So yeah, thank you.